Welcome back to this video. We can discuss about the third method of cache mapping. That is about the set associative mapping in a simplified way. So before starting the set associative mapping, we can understand the fault associating with this second method of cache mapping. Right? So in associative mapping, we can map any of these main memory block to anywhere inside this cache line or anywhere inside this cache memory to any cache lines okay so this is the working principle of associative mapping is there exist free space inside this cache memory that means is uh, any of the cache lines are free here then we can map any of this main memory block to that particular cache line we don't want to follow any particular rule in order to map a particular main memory block to a particular cache line. So in associative mapping, we can map any of the main memory block to anywhere inside this cache line if there exists free space. So the problem associating with this particular method is in order to decide particular requesting memory word is present or not inside this cache memory we have to search throughout this cache memory right we need to uh, search throughout this cache memory in order to decide whether the requesting memory word is present here or not inside this cache memory so the searching technique become time consuming here and also the hardware implementation of this particular cache memory system become expensive also. So this is the problem associating with this associative mapping technique. The search time is higher and the hardware implementation require higher cost. Right? So now we have the third method of cache mapping that is the set associative mapping. Okay? In which we can avoid most of the problem associating with the direct mapping and associating mapping to some extent. What is the problem associating with the direct mapping? The main problem is the condensation. Condensation means in the direct mapping, we need to follow certain rule in order to map a particular uh, main memory block to a particular cache line. We need to follow certain rule. That means in order to place a main memory block to cache memory, we need to check whether a particular cache line, that cache line number is equal to the block number divided by or the block number modulo total number of cache lines inside our cache memory. That particular operation returns a cache line number. We need to transfer a particular main memory block to that particular cache line only. Right, if there exists vacant space in some other cache lines, then in direct mapping, we can't make use such vacant space. We need to follow that particular mapping formula. Cache line number to which a particular main memory block is to be transferred is equal to the block number modulo number of cache lines present in our cache memory. So, it will cause the condensation problem. And in associative mapping, there exists no such condensation problem. We can map any of the main memory block to anywhere inside the cache memory if there exists vacant space. Right. But the problem in associative mapping is the searching time is higher. That means we need to search throughout the cache memory in throughout cache lines in order to decide whether a particular requesting memory word is available there or not and also the hardware cost of implementation for such an associative cache memory system is higher so here we have the third method that is the set associative mapping and this this is actually a combination of our previous two associative and direct mapping techniques Using this third method, we can avoid most of the problem associating with our previous methods to some extent. Right? Here it is a set associative mapping because here we have different sets. The sets are formed by 
grouping different cache lines. Here, this is the uh, this is the cache memory implementation in which four consecutive cache lines are grouped to form a set. The next four consecutive cache lines group to form the next set here, and so on. Right. So the first set form zero, set one, set two. Each of these set with equal number of cache lines. So the basic principle of this set associative technique is we need to group the cache lines to form different sets and sets with equally sized sets. Okay, as shown here, here each of these set with four cache lines. So we can call it as a four-way set associative technique. Four-way set associative means four cache lines for each of the sets. Four way never indicate four sets are present in this cache memory. Four way set associative means four cache lines per set. Keep in mind, four way set associative means four cache lines per set. Two way set associative means two lines per set. Three way set associative means three cache lines per set. Right. So, in general, we can say K way set associative. What's the meaning? K different cache lines per each of these sets. Suppose this K equal to 1. What is the meaning? If K become 1, then this set associative mapping is equivalent to our direct mapping. Okay. So, we can consider some examples. So, in this set associative mapping, we need to follow this mapping principle. A main memory block to be transferred to a particular set. That set number is calculated by following this principle. The block number modulo number of sets present in the cache memory. Just like our direct memory mapping technique, we need to follow this rule. A set number to which a memory block is to be transferred is obtained by the block number modulo number of sets present in this cache memory. Okay. So, suppose here we have the, the, uh, the same previous example, total 64 different words. So, for addressing each of these 64 words uniquely, how many bits are required minimum? 6 different bits. So, the, uh, so the generated physical address for a particular memory word by this processor contain six different bits. Okay. So that six bits can be grouped to form different category. That is block offset part, the set number part and the tag field. Okay. The uh, generated physical address is grouped to form the block offset part, set number part and tag field part. Now we need to understand how to obtain this block offset set number and tag field value using the physical address generated by the processor. Okay, so for block offset here the size of the block is 4 words. For address each of these 4 words uniquely how many minimum bits are required? For that we need 2 bits. Right, so from the generated physical address two least bits form the block offset part. Right. Suppose, here it follow the two-way set associative technique. Two-way set associative means two cache lines per set. Then how many such sets are possible here? The total cache lines here is obtained by the cache size divided by block size. Cache size is 16 words. And each of these block with size 4 words. So, total 4 lines are available as shown here for different lines. And the system follow two-way associative technique. So, the number of sets possible here equal to number of set is equal to cache lines divided by 2. Total 4 cache lines divided by this 2. That is 2 sets are possible in this cache line while following this two ways set associative method. So the question is how many minimum bits are required for addressing each of these set uniquely? Clearly we have two sets for addressing each of these sets. 
we need a single bit so for uh, using that single bit if the value of the bit equal to 0 which will form the address of set 1 set 0 and the value of that uh, bit become 1 which will form the address of second set so the set number part here is a single bit information right add the tag field value here it is total 6 minus this 2 minus this 1 that is the remaining 3 bit for the tag field value okay so this is the case of our set associative mapping with respect to this memory organization now we can consider some examples so the processor generating a physical address with 6 bit information so using this we can identify these three part the least two form the block offset the next one bit form the set number remaining three bit form the tag field value right so we need to move to set number zero that is here here we have two different lines so in these two different lines we need to search for cache, uh, this tag field mapping or tag field matching. So directly move to set 0. Here the set, uh, set number uh, value is 0. So move to set 0. So here we have two different cache lines. So in these two lines we need to search for a tag field match. Here the tag field of requesting memory word is 000. zero, zero. Is there exist any match with these two cache, uh, cache lines tag field value? No, actually this two tag field value uh, is now empty. That means there exists no match with this tag field value of our requested memory word. So it indicate a cache miss. So what we want to do next, we want to identify the block that we want to transfer from main memory to any of these cache lines of set 0 which is the block that we want to transfer this is obtained from these two field of information that is 0000, zero, zero, zero. that is block 0 we want to transfer from main memory to any of this cache lines now it is transferred to line number 0 of set 0 now set the tag field value as 000, zero, zero. right and the requesting word is the one zeroth word of our this block. One zeroth word means zero 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 one one zero. The word two, which is transferred to the processor next. Okay, now this is the current status of our memory system. Processor is requesting for another memory word, but the address physical address is thus. So we can classify this into block offset part, set number part, and tag field part. So again block of sorry the set uh, set number is 0 so directly move to set 0 right but the property here is we have one more cache line available here in this set 0 to hold a new block right one of these cache lines of this set 0 is already filled but we have one more space in order to hold a new block here. If it is a direct mapping technique, in that case, we want to replace this particular block available here with the new block. But here in this set associative mapping, two-way set associative mapping, we have one more cache line here in order to hold a new block in set 0. Okay, so we don't want to perform the cache replacing now. We can, this is actually a cache miss, right? because there exists no tag field match so this is a cache maze but here we have one more vacant space here to hold a new cache uh, new memory block so we don't want to perform the cache replacement now we can cap this block as such here and tra transfer the next block which is that next block 0010 that is block number 2 we can transfer that block number to the next line of our set 0 and set this tag line value as 001. Now identify the word which is requesting by the processor that is this 10th word. Okay. 
So this W0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. W0 is transferred to the processor now. Right? Now we can consider the next example. So the set 0 is completely filled now. Okay, consider the another situation. Processor is requesting a memory word with physical address is this. So from this group, it is clear that we need to go to set number 1. Okay, then go for the tag field matching. Is there exist any block with this particular tag field value? No, actually in set number 1, the two lines with empty tag field value now. That indicate a cache miss again. So, we can transfer a new block from the cache, mem uh, sorry, the main memory to any of these cache lines of set number 1. Which block we want to transfer now? This information is obtained from these two field of information 0011. 0011 is actually block number 3. That is this one. We can transfer to this particular line 2 of set number 1 and set this tag field as 001. Which of the word is requesting from this block? 10th word. 10th word means W. 40, which is transferred to the processor. Right. Now we can consider one more example requesting a memory word with physical addresses. This. So the classification is this. Right. So uh, which set number is representing now? Set number 1 again. So it removed to that particular set. Okay. Now we want to check for the tag field matching. Exactly this tag uh, field matching exists here with line number 2 of set 1, right? So, the, this indicate a cache hit now, right? So, which of this, which word from this particular block is requesting? One one word. One one word means 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? So, we can transfer this word number 15 to processor. Okay, so this is the uh, third method of cache mapping that is set associated. Thank you.